Like a computer with a wonky power button, our world is in a constant state of rebooting. Songs are being re-recorded by different artists, movie franchises are in a constant state of flux, and no television show from a previous decade is allowed to simply rest in peace anymore. Most TV reboots look good on paper, but that's only because it's really easy to get wrapped up in the nostalgia of it all. Sure, Fuller House seemed like a genuinely big deal for about 10 minutes, but those of us who grimaced our way through the first episode can all agree the original show could have been left in the past. But sadly, Fuller House is far from the worst of the gigantic crop of series reboots to pop up over the last few years. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com and this is six TV show reboots that were mercifully cancelled. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding. Ding. Done. Number 6. Heroes Reborn when the original Heroes debuted on television in 2006, there was nothing else quite like it on TV. Never had someone put so much focus on the darker side of superheroes. Sure, Batman Begins was a good start, but Nolan hadn't yet dove headlong into the grittiest aspects of Gotham. There were no capes, no bright colours, and no recognisable comic book names. It was awesome. But the series accomplished everything it needed to the first time around, so there was no real reason to bring it back in 2015. And in terms of aesthetics and characterization, nothing changed in this updated version. It walked like the original and talked like the original with a shoddier set of heroes and actors. Those in charge of Reborn threw everything they had against the wall, introducing way too many characters way too quickly and positioning them against one of the most mediocre villains in recent history. For fans of the original who hoped this wouldn't take their memories of the at times amazing series, it was a relief when this was cancelled pretty early on. Number 5. Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley was the precursor to every brash, wisecracking, uninhibited character in a position of authority throughout the 80s and 90s. Eddie Murphy was a dynamo in Beverly Hills Cop and its sequels, injecting a fresh perspective into American comedy. For a brief moment in 2014, we were led to believe we'd see Axel Foley resurrected on the big screen, with Murphy making a cinematic comeback in Beverly Hills Cop 4. Sadly, that project is currently resting in development hell, with no release date in sight. What led to the possibility of a fourth film was actually the development of a Beverly Hills Cop series, except this would star Axel Foley's son, played by Brandon T. Jackson, whose biggest credits were Tropic Thunder and Percy Jackson. The biggest issue was the tone the show was planning to take. Rather than focus on a 50-50 blend of comedy and action as they did in the films, they opted to bring in Sean Ryan, who's best known as the creator of The Shield, which was not so much with the haha, -ha, and thankfully this one went straight to TV jail. Number 4. The Osbournes when the Osborne family ended their reality show in 2005, the world was more than ready to move on from Ozzy, Sharon, Jack and Kelly. Over the course of the four seasons, we were treated to every boring bit regarding the livelihoods of the heavy metal icon and it's not as weird as you'd think, Kin. But obviously VH1 figured we were ready to pounce back on the Osborne mania that absolutely did not exist in 2015, announcing plans for another intrusion into the well-to-do family's home life. So what would that show have looked like? Well, the kids likely didn't live at home anymore, Ozzy hasn't done anything notable since 2010, Sharon is working on an even blander version of the daytime talk show The View, Kelly works on the same show when she's not doing voiceovers for a Disney cartoon, honestly, Jack's work as an executive producer might be the most interesting part of the family dynamic, and that's… something VH1 thought we were all clamouring to see. Number 3. Charlie's Angels in a rush to scrape up every last viable property from the 70s, ABC decided to retool Charlie's Angels for a new generation in 2011. So what exactly did that retooling entail? Mostly it was just swapping out the original cast of lovely ladies for a batch of equally pretty but completely uncharismatic actresses with little to no name recognition. Whereas the original series and the successful movie remake soared on the chemistry between the Angels and to a lesser extent their relationship with their boss, the ABC reboot sunk like a really awkward anvil that didn't know how to develop a rapport with the other anvils. Minka Kelly struggled mightily to make herself a believable human for the character, while Rachel Taylor and Annie Alonza looked like they'd rather be anywhere else. Add to that a truly horrible batch of storylines, and it came as no surprise that the series was cancelled after only four episodes. Number 2. Murder She Wrote when octogenarian and all-round pleasant lady Dame Angela Lansbury, the star of the original series, starts talking shit about your reboot, it's probably time to start rethinking the idea. Lansbury was vocal in a distaste of using the Murder, She Wrote moniker to retread the basic premise, calling it a mistake. NBC persevered with the reboot anyway, using the exact same premise, supplanting the helps Octavia Spencer in the role of the amateur sleuth, but it died a quick death, ending before it ever really got off the ground, which relieved not only Lansbury, but Spencer as well, who wasn't happy herself with the way things had went. Number 1. The Flintstones 
Seth MacFarlane's plan to take over the world's supply of primetime animated television one property at a time was primed to ramp up once again in 2012, with the Family Guy creator set to dig his satirical claws into one of the most universally beloved cartoons of all time, The Flintstones. What exactly were his plans with Barney, Fred, and prehistoric Bedrock? Well, if literally every other Seth MacFarlane show can be used as a template, it would have been another story about an insane, slovenly head of the household treating his wife and family to constant degradation. But, you know, in the olden times. The Flintstones obviously had a major hand in motivating McFarlane's career, but there was little to no chance of him not turning the series into another Family Guy photocopy. And just because the rights holders of the Rubbles felt it appropriate to go all in with McFarlane, they also granted him the opportunity to make more Flintstones movies if he felt the urge. The president of Fox Entertainment reportedly told McFarlane in regards to his ideas for how to go about recreating Bedrock that he liked it, but he didn't love it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.